Hello, Jimmy here. So, uh, strap in. This one gets weird quick. So it's been a weird old time. I'm sorry about the delay between videos. I got COVID again, and it sucked again. And a load of stuff has been going on with my house and with, like, weather stuff causing havoc. So it's been a bit of a strange time. But thank you. Hi to all my new subscribers. We're over 40,000 of you guys now, which is wild to me. So thank you to all of you guys. Thank you to all of my new patrons. Thank you to everyone who's buying the merch and giving me feedback on the merch. I'm taking it on board. I'm trying to do the stuff now that I can move without crippling joint pains and shortness of breath. Nice. Um, let's talk about Harold Bluetooth. So some of you guys may have seen, and thank you to those of you who sent me some links to media outlets, which reported that the tomb of Harold Bluetooth has been found in a village in Poland. Uh, some of them were very, very definite about it is Harold's tomb. It has been proven that this is Harold Bluetooth's tomb. And I sent some of this info to some other archaeologists, I sent this to some other history tubers, and I sent this to some academics, and the reaction was blanket scepticism. And I decided I was going to dig into this because this, if true, is a huge find in the field. All right, this kind of find is the sort of stuff you would expect to see on all of the major archaeology and history news sites, all of the major news outlets that treat history as a serious subject to be covered, and none of that happened. It was on a couple of sites, and sites like ancientorigins.net and the Daily Mail online, and you can draw your own conclusions as regards the veracity of the information on both of those sites, I couldn't possibly comment. And I decided to have a little look. <laughs> It got weird fast. From what I could work out, this is all to do with a man called Marek Krida, or Krida, or Kruda. Um, apologies if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Um, Marek has posted a video up and has written several pieces online, one of which states that it is Harold Bluetooth's tomb. It has been proven. And the method used to prove it is quoted in various places as laser scanning, high-tech satellite imagery, a team of researchers using technology that allows them to see under the ground itself. And um, after a huge amount of trawling and a huge amount of effort and a huge amount of uh, my own research, um, this image here that we have, I managed to replicate. <laughs> Yeah, it's not laser scanning, uh, and it's not technology that allows you to see under the ground. This is actually a relief map um, from Geoplotter, which is a wonderful website. It's basically the Polish national mapping website, and it gives you fantastic information on... Uh, you get aerial photography, you get satellite photography like you'd get on Google Maps. Uh, you also get LiDAR scanning, which is uh, basically laser scanning, and it's fantastic technology. It's used. It is used to cut through tree canopies and uh, jungle areas, and uh, it gives you a really accurate scan of the surface of something that you want to have an accurate map of. It's been used in Wales to map a lot of the mountainous areas, and it's really, really super cool. This is not LiDAR. Um, you can use a LiDAR layer on this website. There's none in this area. This is a little village just to the east of Volin, if you are aware of the place. You may have been to the huge Viking Age reenactment that happens there, which commemorates the last battle of Harold Bluetooth, who is, you know, generally thought to have died of his injuries at a battle near here um, in the 980s. <clears throat> it's also theoretically and supposedly the site of Jomsborg. Uh, which was like a semi-legendary huge city uh, occupied by the Joms Vikings and was the centre of trade and 
funnily enough, multi-ethnic trade and harmony. Uh, and it's meant to have had Greek people and Turkish people and Norse people and Slavic people all living together and trading together in harmony. Sounds fantastic. And <clears throat> the accepted wisdom is that Harald Bluetooth was buried briefly near here and then his bones were taken up north and buried in a cathedral. Uh, and this is according to a chronicler called Adam of Bremen, who is the only source we really have on this period of Harold Bluetooth's life. And all of a sudden we have all of this news coming out saying his tomb has been found, his tomb has been found. It's been found with the help of this high-tech laser scanning technology. So this is a, a shaded relief map. It's super cool. It's a great piece of Geographic Information Systems technology, GIS technology. Um, this is, but this is the kind of stuff that we learn to use in kind of like the first or second year of an archaeology degree. Um, it's not difficult stuff to replicate. It's not difficult stuff to find. Uh, what it does is shows us that there is a lump here. It, the relief map shows us that there is a different height here. Like there is a feature here. Topographically, this is a feature. What it doesn't give us is the purpose of that feature or the nature of that feature. For that, we need to do a lot more research. And so I went on Google Maps and had a look at it. And far from being the huge Viking burial mound, like you might expect to see at Yelling, um, this is a very low, pretty flat, gentle mound with a church on top of it. This isn't a new discovery. We're told that this is a current discovery um, in a piece that he wrote on academia.edu. And we're also told that remote sensing tools have, quote, exposed a large Viking Age burial mound. They haven't. They've exposed a topographical feature. This is not a Viking Age burial mound until we have empirical evidence that there was a Viking Age burial in it. And we don't have that. But according to this piece on academia.edu, this was found there. So according to a chap called, I've literally taken notes for this video, that's how seriously I'm taking this one, a chap called Sven Rosborn, who is um, a, an archeologist. This church was rebuilt in 1841. And during the rebuilding, a child called Heinrich Bolt found, quote, silver and gold scrap, uh, and then we have two swords, uh, and a gold disc, and a skeleton. None of this seems to exist anymore, except for five artefacts, which includes this gold disc. This is called the Kurmsun disc, because it has the word Kurmsun. Harald Bluetooth was actually Harald Gormsun, and this is apparently linked to Harald Bluetooth. Stylistically, it's supposed to date to the 980s. Um, it is made of gold, according to one of Mr. Rossborn's own articles on academia.edu. It was tested by staff at Lund University. And um, apparently it was lost until somewhere around, I think, 2014, where a little Swedish girl brought it to school to show her teacher. Um, yeah. All of this is word of mouth. None of this has, as far as I can tell, been um, verified by any secondary source, external source. None of the other players appear to have come forward ever um, to claim this story is real. This all seems to just rely on Mr. Ross Rossborn's writing, and that's pretty much it. Like it, it, He's written a few pieces on this. He's actually written a book about the thing, uh, and I reached out to uh, a professor of archaeology, uh, Professor Wiesberg at Lund University, who didn't want to be quoted directly on the subject, um, but I've linked to a review of this book in the comments if you're interested in a full professorial academics opinion on the subject. Uh, I read the book. There's not much in it in terms of actual evidence that this disc is real. I mean, nearly all of the cited work is just more of Sven Rosborn's work from academia.edu. Um, there's very little actual interrogatable evidence that this thing is real. Also, it has a J on it, and they weren't really using Js at this point, and it seems to have been made by lost wax casting, which... Why? If it's, like, it's a coin? Except it's not a coin, according to Rossborn. It's a funeral 
token, which is absolutely a thing. It's also meant to stylistically look a bit like Byzantine coins, which... Not sure it does. However, the only piece of work that we have on Harald Bluetooth, as I mentioned, was by Adam of Bremen, and his piece is called the Gesta Hammerburgensis Ecclesiae Pontificum. So basically the acts of the priests and bishops of Hamburg. However, according to Rossborn, he's lying about all of it. And he has found, as of 2019, a document called the, check notes, Gesta Vulinensis Ecclesiae Pontificum. So the acts of the priests and bishops of Volin. It's definitely not fake. He's definitely found this real manuscript that features in the book that I just mentioned, and no one else has ever seen it, as far as I can tell. Um, we don't get a single page of it, or a single like direct image of the piece of manuscript in the book, um, but it's definitely not fake. Definitely. And that's kind of the problem with this, is according to a lot of the news outlets, this tomb has been found. That's just what they've said. They've said that a team of researchers used laser scanning to look beneath the surface of the Earth. What's actually happened, and Marek Kreider's piece on academia.edu even says this, is no geophysical survey has happened. We've all seen Time Team. We all know that magnetometers and ground-penetrating radars and resistivity allows us to see beneath the surface of the Earth. <clears throat> that hasn't happened. He even says that further research needs to be done in this article, which makes it even weirder that he then authors articles that say this has definitely been proven simultaneously. Like, mate, that is shooting yourself directly in the credibility. I, I reached out to a media outlet to ask if they had any actual evidence, because the piece that had been written was very, very, very firmly, like, this is true, it has been proven. And, um... My snarky-ish email was met with a couple of responses, and then, and I'm sure this is completely unrelated, a random Polish email address sent me the laziest abusive email I've ever had, where they just listed some of my out-of-date CV stuff, and called me a mediocre wannabe. Mate, I'm on YouTube. I get worse than that on the daily from literal Nazis. So... I reported it to the police, and now they're investigating it. Maybe next time, just ignore me. Um, so, this was a wild ride. But let's bring it back, and let's, let's focus on what we actually have here. Empirical evidence. There is a small mound underneath this church. There is a church. There is a disc of unknown date and undocumented provenance. And it is undocumented. There's a website about the Kurmsen disc. At the very top, covering itself, it says that a lot of this is based on letters and verbal communication. In terms of provenance, that's not even good enough for the Antiques Roadshow. That's a step above it came to me in a dream. The Swedish Royal Coin Cabinet, fantastic name by the way, which is basically the major numismatic museum in Sweden. They do all of the testing, they have all of the expertise. Thinks it's fake. They do not think the Kurmsen disc is real. For, for, if you want my opinion, I don't think it's real either. That's just my opinion. Like, I don't believe it. Um, not a page of any document related to it has yet been brought to light. If the skeleton was found there in 1841, it seems to have just disappeared into the ether, along with the two swords and the gold and silver scrap. Never been heard from since. No primary documentation of any of this process of the disc being found seems to exist. Nobody has found Harald Bluetooth. Like, this is a Viking king's burial mound. This is just a church on a small lump of earth. You know how many churches are on small lumps of earth? Quite a few of them because it allows them to be higher up. Not all of them are burial mounds. Some of them are just geological and geographical features. Makes it easy to bury people around it. Oh, crap, sorry, this isn't... This is St. Dennis's in York, sorry. There we go. Sorry, getting my, getting my small lumps with churches on them mixed up there. Is this real? I mean, 
it's impossible to say. And frankly, just saying that it has been found and that this has been proven is misleading enough. Saying it's a research team using advanced laser scanning techniques is full on just not true. This is one person, as far as we can tell, using a publicly, freely available, effectively mapping service, confirming a mound is where we already knew it to be. Frankly, what's even more interesting and what's actually legitimately like piqued my curiosity is the fact that there is another lump just to the east, which may or may not be a feature of interest. It's in the middle of a, a wooded area, but regardless of everything else, we do not have a skeleton. We do not have any interrogatable empirical evidence that there was ever a skeleton. Nobody involved with the church, with any museum, with any university, with any archive or any archaeological service is speaking up on this. And all this really does is invite illegal activity. Because if you pinpoint the location of the single most important early medieval find in Northern European history, probably in the last century, people are just going to metal detect it. Like, they've planted trees and flowers on this mound, so it's not getting geofizzed anytime soon. People will just go there at 2 a.m. with a metal detector and see if they can find anything. Like, this is inviting criminal behavior. Like, this is not how we do this at all. If it's true, if all of this stuff is real, show it to us. Like, give us at least a single page of this magic medieval document. This is the least convincing and least legitimate way to publicise an archaeological discovery I think I've ever seen. I'm not convinced. I don't know a single archaeologist who is convinced. I don't know any way that this could have been done less convincingly, frankly. So, um, has the tomb of Harold Bluetooth been discovered in a tiny village in Poland? Not as far as I can tell. Sorry, this is disappointing, I guess, because I really wanted this to be true and I wanted to open up these articles and see some geophysical surveying had been done following significant desk-based research that had been documented all the way through on a blog or on a museum's website with videos and with a really well done excavation at the end of it all, finding an early medieval tomb. I have colleagues and friends who have excavated inside churches, inside active churches, and have found fantastic things. And all of that was publicised, was made uh, very clear that it was being done legitimately by professional archaeological um, practitioners. And none of that has happened here. All we have is two guys saying, I swear it's true, please believe me, I swear to God, this is a real thing. No, you can't see any of the evidence, but I swear that it's real. And that's so disappointing. I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly had a wild old time researching it and being interviewed by the police, so that was fun. And um, thank you so much to everybody who has followed. Please do like, subscribe, uh, join the Patreon if you would like to contribute on the regular and occasionally get weird stream of consciousness posts from me on the internet. Uh, some people seem to like that. So, thank you so much once again for joining Tantronissa. Till the next time, will am a troll. Bye for now. <laughs>